We have to relate to our brothers and sisters in an entirely different way. We can't live life on planet Earth the way we've done it before. We have to trust. And that's, the, that's what I noticed in our life and the way it's gone in my life with the Course was trust, trust, trust. Okay, so to go to your education, no, you're going to be traveling around five years of not knowing where I was going to sleep at night. Five years, that's what my mind training was, <coughs> 1991 1996. Not knowing where the body was going to sleep at night. That's the kind of radical trust you need to learn to be God-dependent. That helped me. And, <coughs> and I had my fears that would come up pretty strong during those years. And, and I remember from the Bible, where Jesus said, you know, the birds of the air have their nest and the foxes have their holes, but the Son of Man has no place to lay his head. I thought, yeah, okay, let's see how this goes. <laughs> and you can't say to Jesus, you don't know how it's like down here. He's like, yep, been through it all. That's why I'm a way shower. Been right through the darkness, know all about those fears and shoo, right out the other end. That's what you want in a way shower, and you also want somebody who's going to guide you. So that's pretty much been our journey. And a lot of the steps that Francis seemed to take, I think the world would judge them pretty radical. Like, if there was a, I don't even know if there is a word in the English language, except Jesus using it, undoing. But if you go to the dictionary and you look, undoing, you know, that's just not a word that you hear a lot, but if there was, a word undoing in the dictionary, then you, Francis's journey has been pretty radical letting go. Not just of the symbols of, that are seemingly cherished and dear in this world, but then getting to the thinking and the beliefs that was underneath those cherished symbols. Because to the ego, if you start to talk about letting go of cherished symbols, it raises sacrifice big time. Like, Oh my gosh, if he's going there, I'm not going there. Not this lifetime. But actually, he wants us to go there. Yeah. I mean, it's, it is the letting go seemingly in form, for me, it was the starting point to even be able to let go of the thought system underneath that. I mean, just use money as an example. When I had money, the mind was, that is believing in possession and ownership is actually very, very fearful, it's terrified, because it uses what it owns to define itself. So when I had money and accumulated savings in my bank account, I was very afraid, and afraid of losing it, afraid it's st still not enough. And also the most part of my thinking is no matter how everything works out, I still think it's mine. I am taking care of myself, it's my own credit, because I had money. So I would never be able to see even the divine providence that's always at work. I would not have the eyes to see it, because it's so believed in that it's me that is taking care of myself. So when I was guided to actually let go, um, inform the money, that is the first time I had no choice that my mind has to rely on God in mind completely to see how this is going to work because I have no means to plan things and to make things happen to even you know go into the future thinking what I want for my life to be and any it, it just suddenly started to come to a pause and then just watch in wonderment of what's going to come my way and accept what's given and then come to this profound realization that I'm so taken care of, and everything that comes my way is truly the most helpful, that I actually don't know what's the best for me. So in a way, I just realized, even seemingly the form being taken away temporarily, is the most helpful for the mind to be able to open up to something else, because the mind is so closed down. It's not about the form being taken away, 
but it's for what is most helpful for the mind to be able to see. Then as soon as the mind is opening up to see that it's, I'm living in divine providence, and then the mind started to even be able to loosen the identity of friends is being taken care of. Because we, we have this talk that I am not a body that's being taken care of by the universe. I am the universe. I am the money. I am the divine providence. You know, that the mind started to be able to make a shift like that when everything is loosened up. So, and then I, I also feel like, you know, the mind is started to identify itself with the whole, not, not individually. And then when the mind is constantly asking what is the best for the whole, for the mind <coughs> to wake up, for the whole, the older resources come this way because it wants to use even the resources in this world to support the mind and support the whole. You know, that's where the, the life flows, so to speak. But every time when, when the mind locks down to, to think about a false identity, it only sees through a filter of lack, and it cannot see any providence through that filter. So that's really the, the transformation in my own experience Thinking about form, losing the form as a sacrifice is so, um, so such a core belief in the ego, but the ego has no idea, has no idea what is on the other side. Yeah. Yeah, there was a, a early Course in Miracles teacher named Tara Singh, um, who used to talk a lot about the status quo, and uh, the status quo as he used it is basically everyone who comes to this world makes a self-concept and tries to build that self-concept. So we're told we need education, we need jobs, we need money, we need investments, we need to make a nest egg. It's a whole script for coming here. Uh, okay, maybe you messed around when you were kids and played and you messed around as a teenage years, but you better get your act together uh, in your 20s, if not then, you better get it together because you've got to survive, you've got to survive. <laughs> and so you got to put it all together and do it. And, and it's a status quo thing where you work so hard. I mean, actually, it's kind of interesting that survival, it's, it's hard work. It takes a lot of work. And then when you put years and years and years in it, your fingers are, your fingernails are like really in it. If it was like a cake, if you made this big like wedding cake, your fingers are like in the cake. You're heavily invested in that cake. You put frosting and cake all over and you're not letting it go. You're not letting go of that cake you worked so hard to build for so long. That's the status quo. It's all a self-concept. It's, it's blocking you from the kingdom of heaven. It's blocking you from love. It's blocking you from joy, that clinging. And so, that's what Francis is really talking about, is you have to go, you have to trust and go the other way. And the ego is going to shriek if you go the other way, like, Oh, you're going to really be sorry. Old and alone and sick and broke. <laughs> uh, and you know, it's going to hammer the mind, even if it starts to contemplate letting go of this rat race. It's been called the rat race. Just, it's a, it's, it's really, it's upward mobility, it's go, 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 keep going, and it's all a big scheme. It's all a big scheme. It all is designed to defend against the truth. We've had some fun, a man from Sweden just was asking again, he, he, the, the idea came up, you can't be a CEO and be enlightened, and you know, we go into that in great depth because it's, what's a CEO and the profit motive and managing people and you know all the things that go in to be a chief executive officer. He even used by mistake used CIO and I said, oh, chief intelligence officer. <laughs> yeah, that's another one. You've got to let go of being the chief intelligence officer and the chief executive officer. See, oh no, you've been driving the car. You need to get into the passenger seat for this ride. There is no way you're going back to the kingdom of heaven with you personally steering the vehicle. You've been driving off the road and crashing into things for m many years, and you're not going back to peace of mind 
with you driving the car. In fact, people have asked me, well, is there any formula? I said, there's no formula, but, but to me, I got from the Course, listen and follow. Listen, follow. That was the one-two thing I was doing the whole time. Listen, follow. Listen, follow. And then, if you listen and follow with, with really consistency and determination, and you really give your, your heart over to it, you'll find that even listen, follow falls away. You just are the presence. There's no listening and following. Mm -hmm. It's all involuntary once you click into that devotion. You don't have to figure out how it's going to happen. In fact, it's delightful not knowing how anything's going to happen. It's delightful being clueless. I always say clueless and cared for. You're so cared for, you don't have to give a thought. Take no thought for what you should wear, what you should eat. eat. Seek the first, the kingdom of heaven. So, Deliriously happy with all these people. You don't even say them anymore. It's just, uh, our use for words is almost over. It's just, you, you get into a state of mind that, that everything is given and you don't have to have a concern. Mm -hmm.